This show is called the Urban Business Roundtable. This show is dedicated to the creation of growth of the urban entrepreneur and the small business owner. We have three primary goals here on the Urban Business Roundtable. One, to redefine the word urban, to help the urban community leverage our collective purchase and power. Two, to be a resource for the creation, sustaining, and growth of small businesses and entrepreneurship. And three, to provide small business owners and entrepreneurs access to capital and opportunity to grow their business. You can listen to the Urban Business Roundtable live every Saturday uh, morning from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. here on the Talk of Chicago, and also the condensed recap on Wednesdays at 8.30 a.m. and Thursdays at 6.05 p.m. Got a great show lined up for you today. Today's show, we got Miss Sheila Morgan, the president and founder of Chicago Minority Supply Diversity Council. Good morning, Sheila. Good morning. That uh, is uh, uh, not the founder. Okay. The president. And... Um, it's the Chicago Minority Supplier Development Council, not diversity. Okay, so let's get it right. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, it we'll right. make sure we get that title correct. Get it right. Thank you, Ms. Morgan. Yes, sir. Also, uh, we got a couple of different entrepreneur success stories. We got a commercial truck driver turned entrepreneur, Mr. Bill Hazel, owner of Bill's Grill. Good morning to you, Bill. Hey, good morning. How are you? All right, all right. And then we got our media guests, our media <laughs> superstars in the, in the building. We have the uh, two. Both co-founders, you and Morgan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so co-founders of The Tribe magazine with Tiffany Walden and Morgan Elise Johnson? Yes. Okay, they're going to be our guests today. So sit back, relax, and let yourself go. I want to say thank you again to my creator, God. Thank you for all that you do. Praying always that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart finds acceptance in your sight. So I appreciate you for giving me this opportunity. I want to say good morning to everyone that's checking out us on Facebook Live. Brooke Harris from Atlanta, good morning to you. Uh, Miss Forrest, good morning to you. Also, Cynthia Bowman, good morning. I want to say good morning to my team that makes up the team of the Curtis R. Money Insurance Agency. Call my office at 708-647-1005 to schedule your free insurance and financial reassessment. Um, also, our in-house studio guests, I'm not guests, but our team, the the Mighty Duo. We got my man, Mighty Titus, on the ones and twos. Good morning, Titus. How you doing? Good morning, Curtis. How are you doing? I can't complain, buddy. And Sonia Levine. Our producer. Hey, Sonya. Oh, man. Well, you got a bone. Okay. What's your bone? Speak. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? I got you now. Go ahead. If you play some more Jay-Z, I'm going to cry. Can we get some Michael Jackson in this, in this mix? Uh, if it's a sample with Jay-Z rapping, yeah. If you find one, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for diversity. We can meet. So find that sample with Mike singing the hook. And hold rapping or something, and we, we we could do that, you know. <laughs> Dang, so it has to be something with Jay Z. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. You need something to to inspire me, you know. So I'm over. I'll do this. I'm going to sing something. Jay Z gonna be the hook. How about that? Ah, right, look at you, look at. You. <laughs> See y'all, look. We can't get this on camera. Sonya got a new hairstyle, right? <laughs> it's cute. Too. It's cute, right? It's so. Cute. So, you know, she, she kind of feeling herself. She got the new hairstyle, new glasses. She walking with a new. What you do last night, Sonya? You know, the rain do stuff. To people. What you do last night? <laughs> Speaking of rain, we got that. Um, y'all seen the Saw Saint Redemption? We got that Andy Dufresne rain last night. You know that, that scene in Saw Saint when he, <laughs> when he, climbed, yeah, 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 he yeah. climbed through the little sewer yeah, system yeah. to get out. It was like it rained. We got that kind of rain. Like, I'm like, what the heck? Is it still raining? It's still yes. Raining. It's going to rain all day, I think. It ain't all day. And I was telling Tiffany when I walked in the studio, everybody want to be an entrepreneur. Everybody want to be a, a real estate owner. Well, welcome to real estate investing. So I get the call at midnight last night from the tenant with a camera phone picture of the ceiling kind of has gone in from all the rain. Yeah. And it's nobody's fault but my fault because the, the, the property need a tug point as as we I'm pushed the envelope and say, ah, wait, ah, wait, ah, wait. Now, what little butt I got, and it bit me in the butt. So that's my that's my day-to-day when I get off the air to try to go and, and try to, you know, do my thing in respect to um, uh, the, the investment. We got so many individuals who were asking about uh, when I mentioned last week about uh, Chance, my son Chance Jordan, uh, a.k.a. Chance the Baby. I call my son Chance the Baby. <laughs> and I mentioned last week, I said that we had put a deposit and basically paid for his college education on last week mm. because I bought a two, I bought him a two-flat building. That's super dope. Man, it's, it's, it's a blessing. That's and, awesome. And people were really like, how did you do it? And I said, well, maybe I'll, I'll teach about this, but I'll, I'll say it again. We bought the property at, at the right price, yeah. right? So we bought it low. It was distressed. We're going to rehab it. And when you fix it up, the after repair value 
you know, is there. So That's the right. purchase price is here. The after repair value is there. So it has this thing in the middle called equity, yes. right? Yes. And so mm-hmm. between now and the time he gets, reaches age 18, we'll take those monthly rental income, that profit, and put it in what's called a 529 plan. And that's a plan you use for college education. There's a myriad of different plans a person can use for education. We just chose the 529 plan. And we'll use that. And if there's, in, if there's any gap in the cost for the college education, we'll refinance the property in respect to the equity and use that as a down payment. You need to teach so a class on that. Yeah, yeah, you do. And so he won't graduate with $100,000 worth of debt. Right. He won't right. graduate he won't, with 100. He'll be, he'll be straight. Yeah, and that's the, that's the yeah. goal, you yeah, know, yeah, to, yeah. to try to take it one step further than, you know, what my generation, well, my parents, yeah. you know, they broke their neck to do the very best they could. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, he, God yeah. God willing, yeah. he won't have that 100 grand in debt. And then the goal is to acquire 50 of these. Yeah. And so when he's old enough, after I've trained him up to be able to walk into – a uh, blooming real estate business that he can leverage and do, and hopefully you leave that for his kids, my grandchildren, et cetera, and, you know, and the B kind of goes on and on. Mm. Each so, one, teach one. Each one, teach one. Each one, teach one. So we got some great guests. Let's start with, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to have the patient invest report with our man Kwa from Aerial Investments, and then we'll come back uh, with uh, Miss Morgan and talk about diversity and, and the supply the supplier chain and things of that nature. Keep it locked here uh, on the Urban Business Roundtable, Curtis R. Monday. All live in the studio. I want to hear from you. Call my office at 708-647-1005. I need you guys to make sure you follow me on Instagram at C Monday and be sure to go out to the YouTube um, channel to subscribe to Curtis R. Monday. We put the um, um, the, the broadcast or the, the, the video portion of the Urban Business Roundtable out on the YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe. All this great information you'll hear from my guests Today, you can go back and replay because, trust me, there, there's a ton of resources that you may not catch in your car ride and where you are right now, but you can go back on the YouTube channel to hear it over and over again. Um, and so uh, we're going to go right now to the patient investor report uh, with our man Mario from uh, Aerial Investment Capital. Thanks. It's Mario Gage, your patient investor from Aerial Investments. Aerial's number to know is zero. Zero dollars, that is. When it comes to properly managing your money, sometimes you just have to say no to unnecessary expenses. To help you see the power in saying no, I want to challenge you to an entire month of zero dollars of unnecessary purchases. We will call this the month of no. For a month, try to make major changes in two main areas, food and transportation. You should avoid eating out and instead go to the grocery store and plan your meals in advance. You should also avoid using ride-sharing apps and instead use public transportation or your own car. Lastly, do not make any miscellaneous purchases that are not necessary, such as new clothes, accessories, or music. You are, of course, allowed to spend money on basic housing needs, such as your rent or mortgage payment. Many times, we end up spending a lot of unnecessary money when we're hanging out with friends. But here's a tip. Loop your friends in on what you're doing. They can help keep you accountable and may even join you. This month of no will allow you to be more deliberate with your purchases. After everything is said and done, you can set aside the money you save from just challenge to jumpstart or add to your emergency fund or investment account. For more tips, visit aerialinvestments.com. And remember, slow and steady wins the race. Thanks, Mario, for this week's patient investor report. Great information. Now, Mario went to the, he went to the ocean with that one. Mario just told me no Uber Eats or DoorDash mm-hmm. for a month. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, man, he yeah. just I'm said that. He, he just I'm said that. Saying. We can't Uber or, or, or uh, what's the Lyft anywhere else. That, that was at... But we can say no pretty. We got that no thing. Like, no, we can say no really, really well. I was in um, Ace Hardware the other day, and you go to the counter, and they always have, like, this special thing where you can, uh, you can like, round up to the nearest dollar. So if, you, if it's, like, at $4.50, 51 cents, you can round your price up to $5, and the different goes is a charity to fight heart disease. Mm-hmm, right. It was three people in front of me. And so, hey, sir, when you want to, you know, you're $4.51, you want to round up to $5? No. no. Next person, mm-hmm. you want to round on the no. Next person, no. You got to me. I was like, yeah, go ahead. I, I would want to save somebody. Like, like we say no to everything, even good things. And so we got that no thing down, pack Mario. <laughs> so listen to great advice again by Mario and an aerial uh, investment. I want to welcome my first guest. 
Uh, she's the CEO and president of the Chicago Minority Supplier Development Council. Uh, it's a premier organization for increasing business opportunities between major buying organizations and minority-owned businesses. Uh, the chapter here is one of 24 affiliates of the National Minority Supplier Development Council, again, a nonprofit corporate membership organization that advances business opportunities for its certified Asian, Black, Hispanic, and Native American business enterprises and connects them to its corporate members. Um, and so I want to say good morning to Ms. Sheila Morgan. Good morning to you, Ms. Morgan. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good morning, Curtis. Absolutely. I appreciate you, and I always... You know, Sonia sings your praises and respect to the work you do. I and pay I'm always, her. yeah, I pay her. yeah, yeah I pay her. <laughs> I'm always excited about individuals who can give information that is going to help our small businesses be better at what they do uh, to help us be more competitive. And so tell us a little bit about the organization its Genesis uh, and, and how you guys got started. OK, so so Curtis, first of all, thank you for having me this morning. Yep. It is always any opportunity that I have a, to talk about the Chicago Minority Supplier Development Council and minority business development is really a blessing. You began this morning by thanking God, and I thank God for the work that he's allowed me to do. This organization was birthed 52 years ago, if you can believe that, mm. right here in Chicago, and it was born out of social unrest. Uh, there were corporate members around the Chicagoland area that knew that if entrepreneurs, if black businesses did not have an op opportunity to access capital, to grow their businesses, that it would only continue to increase. So there was something that was called an Opportunity Day, mm -hmm. and that Opportunity Day invited minority businesses, well, then it was just black businesses, into this trade show kind of environment, and they opened their coffers and said, there's opportunity for you to do contracts with us, to contract with us. And so that was the genesis of this national organization that we now have. There are 23 of us across the country in every major city that you can think about. There is a council like Chicago MSDC. However, we are the oldest, and we're one of the largest in this NMSDC network. And I'm talking fast because there's a, there are a lot of things that I want to emphasize. Number one, it's a resource for you if you want to grow your business. Mm. A lot of people don't know about it. And I don't know after 52 years why or how that is. So the tribe is going to help us to get the word out. Okay? Sure. <laughs> so today they're going to be right. talking about us, and you're going to talk about us to other entrepreneurs. If you are trying to grow your business and if you're interested, for example, in working with a major corporation, somebody like, let's say, United Airlines or Exelon or uh, People's Gas, if, if that's your target market, you ought to be a part of the Chicago Minority Supplier Development Council. If you're interested in doing business with the state of Illinois, for example, if you have a food truck and hey, you hey. have to get a food license and, you know, you have to get you have to have contracts or contacts within the state or the city. The council can help you do those things. If you're building your business and you uh, need some marketing resources, for example, whatever those diff basic different things that you might need to build your business, we can help you with. We have something that's called a MBDA business center that's funded by the U.S. Department of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And that whole goal is just to work with businesses of color. We have an export center. So... A known fact is a lot of times right here in the city of Chicago, it's hard to get work, right? Right. You know, you got a, you're trying to get a contract with a, a small business, a, a major corporation, whoever it might be. Sometimes it's better for you to uh, sell outside of the United States, right. believe it or not, believe right. it or not. And we have the tools inside of Chicago Minority Supplier Development Council that can help you do that. We have what's called an MBDA cool. Export Center. What we have found when we've gone to these other countries is if you go to Africa, they're not trying to look for the Chinese to work with. They're looking for you. Right. You know, and, and while you think your business may be small, if you're in an African country it, and there's another back black business that you can partner with, chances are you aren't as small as you think you are. So let, let, me, let me jump in right there because I know that there's a business owner somewhere listening to this program or, or watching and they're thinking to themselves, well, my business isn't in a stage yeah, where it's, yeah. it, 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 you know, it, it's applicable to what yeah. you're speaking. What does an average business look like that works with your organization? Well, so, so we have businesses. We, we work with everybody from soup to nuts. Okay. I, like to, I like to think of myself as a boardroom to a boiler room kind of a executive, right? Okay. So that means no business is too small and no business is too large. So if you are a new business and you're interested in learning more about how you, who you want to connect with. So 
let me say this. So you started out by saying we're a membership organization, and the members, the people who fund us to do the work oftentimes are these big corporations. They uh, invest because they want to work with you because it helps them to grow our communities so that what uh, Mario was talking about earlier, we have resources sure. to invest. It's a it's a whole ecosystem that we're talking about, Curtis. Sure. It's, 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 it's I'm a on big, the air. Go ahead. It's, it's, <laughs> it's an ecosystem. So customarily, some businesses that are working with, like Ariel, is a member of the organization. So, you know, Ariel's a huge business, right? right. So Ariel works with us. And then they, have, they help uh, major corporations to diversify their funds. You know all of that. But then there may be a smaller business, like there may be a janitorial business that's working with us that may be going into a major corporation and or – one of my very basic tenets is we must do business with each other. Absolutely. Oh, we okay. can do a, we can do a whole okay. show. A whole that show. One, don't don't ask somebody else to do what you're not willing to do. There's an opportunity yeah. for every black business to do business with another black business. Absolutely. Or a person of color. Absolutely. We should be very intentional uh, about intentional. that to make sure that we're circling intentional. that dollar. Intentional. So the, the theme I'm getting my listener audience is this: no matter where you may think your business is, call Miss Morgan. Let, let, don't discount yourself already. Let let her and her organization look at you and yes. guide you and help you. Yes. Because even if you're not ready yes. now, it could be no, yes. not now, but it's not never. Right. These are steps you need to take to get play. So let me ask you a question. What is the – you gave me the genesis in, when re, in respect to when the organization started and what was the motivation, and now we're fast-forwarding to 20, uh, 2019. Wow. How has the, the overall environment changed in respect oh, to minorities goodness. and – and oh, getting the opportunities and diversities in the supply chain. Oh my goodness, that's a a million dollar question. Okay. Um, things the more things change, the more things remain the same. So yes, things have changed significantly. I mentioned from the beginning that we started and we were merely focused or solely focused on black businesses. Today we we're focused on uh, people of color in general. But I will tell you, I'm a black woman, mm. and I have a specific passion for the success of black businesses, all businesses, but I'm just saying I'm black and I, I want to see black businesses Absolutely. succeed. The difference, one of the differences today is, you know, people used to talk about, in, in my space, they used to have conversation about set-asides and that kind of thing. There are no set-asides. You be, be comfortable that the businesses that are working today are qualified to do the work that they are doing. Not any handouts. What What is different today is we recognize that minority businesses contribute significantly to this ecosystem that I talked about before. When we are all working, when our, when our, when our communities are successful, it helps those businesses that are, are in our communities to be successful. If you, if you cut it, and you just think about when people are not working, they can't pay taxes, they can't send their kids to school. The, the system is broken when people are not working. Black businesses hire black people. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Right? More than anybody else. So in order to sustain this economy, we need to intentionally make sure, we need to be intentional about making certain that entrepreneurs have access to all of those things that they need to succeed. Absolutely. That's different, I think, from what we did in the past. past to now. Yeah. For individuals, uh, Ms. Morgan, who are interested in working with your organization, where can they find you? Where can they locate you? So um, I want to say two things. Sure. Um, one of the things that we focus, we focus on four basic pr principles. We certify minority businesses. We develop them, we connect them, and we advocate on their behalf. So when there are problems in the community or with the businesses, we're the ones that are out talking about that. You, uh, so certification is important, and I know everybody on this phone probably or on the lines out there have some idea what certification means, but if you don't know, call us and we'll help you with that. You can find us at www.chicagomsdc.org. So that's our website. Absolutely. And uh, the n office number is 312-755-8880. Don't, don't discount yourself, okay? You know, um, we want you. We want you. We want you to succeed. And if you are not the right fit for us, we know and uh, who you are a better fit for. Absolutely. So well, let us help you. Help us help you. Help us help you. Ms. Yes. Sheila Morgan, CEO 
and president <laughs> of the Chicago Minority Supply Development Council. Yeah, worker bee. That's what I am. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Hang out with, hang out with us a little more. Call me live in the studio. I want to hear from you. Great conversation. We tried, when we set up the Urban Business Roundtable, we, we attempt to provide information that can edify the um, uh, growing small business community, the edify the entrepreneur who's looking to take their business to the next step, or even inspire the person who says, I want to start a business. One way to help with that inspiration is to always to hear stories about individuals who are going after their passion, pursuing their dreams, who maybe have let go of a job in, in pursuit of that. And so my next two guests uh, kind of talk about that. Media. Media. We talk about with the uh, Urban Business Roundtable how one of the goals is try to take off the negative connotation about the word urban. When you think of urban nowadays, it's used so negatively right now in the media. You think of you know uh, uh, minorities, or you think of uh, violence and things of that nature. But you know, there's a lot of money in the urban community. One point two trillion dollars in the African American community. So we want to make sure that we still educate on how to leverage that power. And so my my next two guests. Uh, have taken the media world here, definitely in Chicago and nationwide by storm. And so I want to say good morning to uh, my two guests. They are the uh, co-founders of um, the Tribe magazine, right? Yes. So I'll let them introduce yourselves. Let's go first. Uh, thank you again for having us this morning. My name is uh, Tiffany Walden. I'm co-founder and editor-in-chief of the Tribe. And my name is Morgan Elise Johnson. I am also a co-founder and the creative director of the tribe. Okay. So Morgan and Tiffany. So you guys go back like car seats, right? Yeah. <laughs> Northwestern yeah. alum? Yes. So when they came in, I, I told Tiffany, I said, Northwestern, you smart, smart. <laughs> you for real smart. That ain't nothing to see um, two, two African-American women, highly intelligent, doing their thing. Tell me what was the, the, the motivation behind the, the tribe. And let's start with you, Morgan. What was the motivation? Um, I'm like, it depends on where you want to start. Okay. Um, really, from about 2012 to 2015, it seemed to me, um, it felt like the dominant narrative of Chicago was violence. And I don't know if it was cro- a cross between the music at the time, you know, drill music was <laughs> on the rise. Um, and then we had President Obama in office, and it put Chicago on the international stage as the home of the president. And and then it seemed like the mainstream media used Chicago as a way to attack um, black liberal politics and the right. president. And we saw, a, for me, a really extreme rise in crime reporting. Um, Chirac. It seemed like yeah. the only narrative out there was, you know, Chirac and the statistics of gun violence every day every weekend and it got to a point where it felt really traumatic to us and we just started to discuss it a lot in our friend circles and even working outside of the city because neither tiffany and i were working in the city at the time but we would say hey we're from chicago we're from the chicago area and immediately somebody would say oh wow you made it out wow you made it to college (laughs) like what is this so um um, we realized it was a problem and that we needed to come back and do something that's, that's about so, it. That's so amazing how the the, the narrative has gotten and, and given Chicago the stigma as this literal war zone. Like when you're from Chicago, you, excuse me if I'm wrong, you don't really feel, I don't feel like my life is in danger. No. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm street, I know where to go and where not to go. And at certain, But that's no different than any other major urban city. It's not like you walk out and you got to duck and get shot. So... You're right. This narrative has gone way too far when it comes to Chicago. Morgan, before I get to Tiffany, Morgan, what did you do before you guys started the magazine? I'm a filmmaker. filmmaker. I'm still a filmmaker. Okay. So, yeah, I was trained at um, Northwestern and um, and studied film there. And I've been working in the documentary space Absolutely. since. Absolutely. So being a publicist is new for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Tiffany, what was your... Uh, what was your background before the magazine launched? I'm a journalist. journalist. So before uh, the tribe launched, I was at the Orlando Sentinel covering breaking news. Um, so I was watching the coverage of Chicago from outside and seeing how you know CNN and everyone would parachute in and um, just continue to create this sensationalized um, view of Chicago and the violence. And so just to piggyback on what y'all were saying, um, my sister and, and is from Chicago. She lives in Orlando. She's been there for, I don't know, like, 20 maybe 20 or 15 years now 
But even her family gets to a point where they're like, oh, I don't know if I want to come back to Chicago because the news has created this idea in people's minds that as soon as you step out of O'Hare, as soon as you step out of Midway. You're getting shot. Yeah, that's it for you. Um, So even seeing that in my own family, she was born and raised on the West Side just like me. Like seeing her have that same mentality made me realize, too, like that this was kind of getting out of hand. Um, So then once before we started the tribe, too, I moved back to Chicago and started freelancing and covering um, black culture. Um, news in Chicago, and then we started the tribe. So, uh, oftentimes, when entrepreneurs, are, I see, a, I see, a start with a skill, right? And that skill is uh, the fire for that is, is a passion, and that passion leads to an idea. And now you guys have the tribe magazine. Ultimately, the goal, right? And I'm asking because when I turn on the news and I see publications like uh, Fox News, who are very uh, unapologetically. Uh, supporting the right conservative perspective, and they do it, you know, again, unapologetically. That's their mission. That's their goal. That's their vision. What do you see as the, as the vision for the Tribe magazine? What, what, what do you, if we're having this conversation five or, year, ten, five or ten years in the future, what do you see as the, as the end result for the magazine? Um, our goal is for Black Chicago to have a voice. There's so, so many times when um, mainstream media is covering black Chicago that, you know, they just are telling stories about folks and not really amplifying uh, their voice. And so for us, we wanted to give um, ownership and agency back to black folks and teach them how to tell their own stories and um, how to make sure that they're included in the history of Chicago, too. Um, Growing up and, and going to high school in Chicago, like, we didn't learn like black history about Chicago. Right. I, um, that, a lot of that stuff I learned on my own, a lot of stuff about the black Panthers or a lot of stuff about Ida B. Wells. Even I learned on my own as an adult. Um, so for us, it's making sure that we're not erased out of um, the overall history and achievements of Chicago. So we've, uh, we've uh, contributed so much. How do you vet media? For example, Miss Morgan gave me a statistic about, you know, minority suppliers and I, I doubted it. I can probably go find a resource to, combat what she had to say or, or to do my due diligence. But you would think that the media would be the sacred temple where the information that is given is gospel. But we find, and, and unfortunately, the, the guy in the White House has termed this coin <laughs> fake news, right? And he, he propagates a lot of fake news. How do you vet media? Like, how, how does one, you know, vet media to make sure that the information you're getting from the source is in fact credible? That's a tough question um, because for us it has been difficult to come up in the fake news era right. because it's much harder for new publications to get verified. It's hard for us to get even a Wikipedia page because um, now all the main players, they don't want to just say any site is a new site because so many of them are propaganda sites. Um, so I always say, like when I'm going through my Facebook feed and I'm seeing people posting just random headlines, I'm always coming in the comments saying, hey, did you make sure that you read this story? For right. one, because a lot of people share stories just and based off of the, the shock headline. value of the headlines. Yeah, right? Yeah. And they don't read the story. So I say, hey, did you read the story? Hey, did you see if this um, story was covered by multiple news sources? Sure. Yeah. And I know that we say like mainstream media, but um, having a recognizable name and recognizable journalists who have like some some you know credibility matters so you need to check to make sure that the story that you're sharing has been covered by multiple sources and that's kind yeah. of what i do i don't know you're the journalist journalist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's the same thing uh, making sure that things um are covered by multiple people um also just checking the facts in the story too you know i anytime i read something in a story i'll you know do a quick google search and see if someone else has written about that particular topic even if it's not the story itself it may be something within the story that you want to learn more about um so even taking the time out like something like tips for example you know taking the time out to read and understand what that is when you're reading it in a story to make sure that the story is um accurate is something that i practice as a journalist sure sure Uh, big hats goes off to both these uh, young women wait hold on there's one thing i want to add to that sure make sure in the stories that you're reading that the sources are cited because some some people some papers will quote people but there's no name attributed it's an anonymous source yeah so that matters okay so if there's no name attributed to a quote then you need to take all of that with a grain of salt absolutely Mm -hmm. i was going to commend you to both because um 
both have uh, highly intelligent with an art, artistic kind of base. Uh, I don't have an artistic bone in my body. Like I got. <laughs> I don't even know if I passed, you know, drawing and coloring in, in, in grade school. So when any, I find anyone that can take their intellect combined with their natural artistic ability and create something beautiful, I'm, I'm always like, you know, saluting you. Oh, come on. That's not true. You're here on the radio. You're a storyteller. Yeah, like. I'm just talking crap, though. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it takes skills to be on the radio. Hey. Yeah. OK, cool. <laughs> I OK, to say to say, see, that's all that Jay-Z I listen to. Um, Everybody can't be a radio personality. <laughs> so. Individuals, if they want to support the publication, they want to support what you guys are doing, how can we help? Uh, go to the tribe.com. It's the tribe with two eyes.com. We accept um, donations. <laughs> um, also, just sharing our stories and following us on social media as well. Um, we're the tribe with two eyes on Facebook and on Twitter, and the tribe Chicago on Instagram, um, but helping to spread the word about the tribe and um, encourage people yeah, to read sign our up stories. Yeah, our newsletter. Yeah, our newsletter. Um, you can do that on our website, too. Sure. But, you know, dollars matter. I always say that. I mean, support to me means money. Cut like, the if check. You want, <laughs> Cut the check. If you want this to continue, we have to be able to make it sustainable. So if you are a, a business owner, you you own a black-owned business, then advertise on the tribe. You Absolutely. can email us, info at the tribe.com. Absolutely. Connect at the tribe.com. Yeah. Okay. And, again, I, I'll offer my services. If you if you ladies ever need someone who speak on the topic of entrepreneurship, finance, and things of that nature, look me up. I can write here and there. Mm-hmm. So let me know if I can be of any assistance. Awesome. All right. Tiffany Walden, Morgan Elise Jordan. Johnson. 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 <laughs> Jordan Johnson. So I got Chance Jordan on my Morgan Elise Johnson, <laughs> uh, founders of The Tribe magazine. We're going to segue and bring our, our next guest into the hangout because I, I want you guys to have some dialogue with this as we get into our next segment. Uh, great show here on the Urban Business Roundtable. Now, this guy called some flack with me. A uh, lot of flat. A lot of flat. Well, well, first of all, let, let me give him his kudos before I give him flat. Like, again, I applaud anyone who can take their passion and turn it into a business. So uh, our next guest uh, drove trucks. Yep. And as a form of therapy, as a form of relaxation, would come home and barbecue. And took that therapeutic practice and turned it into his own business and started uh, his barbecue business, which is called Bill's Grill. And so I want to say good morning to our uh, our guest this morning, entrepreneur Bill Hazel. Good morning to you, Mr. Hazel. Good morning, and I want to say thank you for having me on. And, uh, of course, i got to get a, give a couple of shout-outs before sure. we dove into anything. First sure. of all, I want to say hello to my wife who's watching on Facebook. Hi, honey. <laughs> um, uh, shout-out to all of the Bill's Grills uh, team um, and uh, to my, uh, uh, my Y agency and all of the folks who helped make this possible, us getting here. Absolutely. Now, Bill's, one of his claim to fame is that his barbecue is so good yep. that it don't need sauce. Yep. Right? Exactly. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> uh, listen. I challenge listen. that because he said his, his, you go, you, he going to have to be on your truck. Hey. Yeah, that's listen, his sauce, it's, too. It's, 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 that's his, it's that's a claim. His, it's a claim that that we we hold dear to I our heart, and, and we we stand behind it wholeheartedly. Okay. Now I told Mr. Hazel that the only individual that has ever made that claim and it's been sufficient is my daddy. And I'm not going to go yeah, against and my, dad. And listen, my and your husband, right? Listen, listen, what, I can't go against dad. I can't go against no but, husband. But I, I say this because that. because I'm looking like okay, I, I feel you. That's that's great. Well, right. what the tip said, man? What, what, <laughs> what a tip? What a chicken? Like you know, I know I try to do this whole faith, family, finance, fitness thing, but man, bring the you know bring the get down on. Yeah. So right. he got to come back, right? I got to come. back. He got to come back, Titus, and bring some pans. You know, some. But t- tell us, I'm, I'm just playing with you, but. Tell, tell us about how you were able to, to take the, the, the step from going from corporate America to your passion. Okay, so it wasn't um, basically me just uh, jumping ship from corporate America. Okay. Um, most of us, I think, uh, that get in certain businesses are in businesses because of situations or circumstance, um, especially those that are in my, my line of work. Um, so... I was a truck driver over the road for 20 plus years. And I, you know, it's a very stressful job going across the country. You see a lot of crazy things out on the road. It's just very stressful being out. So as a way of unwinding, um, I got into barbecuing just mm. on, like on a whim. You know, my mother-in-law, um, had this recipe of, uh, of how she seasoned her meats. 
And uh, I kind of took that and adapt to it because it was I had never tasted anything like that. Right. And um, my wife and I kind of came up with our own dry rub. And we said, let's let's add this, let's add that. And in the beginning, man, let me tell you, it just wasn't great. It wasn't great the, at all. The, the taste wasn't great. Oh, no, the product wasn't great. Okay. The taste wasn't great. The process wasn't great. Um, and I attribute that to uh, 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 an old proverb or uh, a statement that Confucius says that every master was once a disaster. Yeah. I was a complete disaster. Okay. Yeah, listen, the fire department was on the way. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) So, um, but we start getting into it, and it got better and better. But but what happened was I wanted to challenge myself because I wanted to get this. I just couldn't accept I can't get this process. So we started watching YouTube videos, and then – uh, the Neelys came out, right? Everybody remember the Neelys on the Food Network? And this guy said, I want to show you how to smoke meat. And I said, man, I want to learn how to do that. Mm. And again, when I first started, man, it was horrible, horrible, man. It was, it, I overdid it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You just couldn't even eat this food. Then it started to make sense to me. Right. And I wanted to get better. Right. And I just kept working at it, working at it. The more I worked at it, the more relaxing it became. Yeah. So on the weekends, I'd work Monday through Friday, come home on the weekends, fire up the barbecue grill. Right. And I had so much meat, man, I had to call people over. I couldn't eat all this stuff. So we called friends over, family over, and it got good. Were you just, on the weekends, were you just kind of like testing out your, your, your thing? Had you gone full with the business at that point? No, or were you just kind of testing? The, a business wasn't even in our purview at that point. Okay. Not even close. Listen, this was just a, a hobby, a way of escape. It was a woosah for me. Okay. It was just how you unwind. Some folks go fishing. Some folks play golf. You barbecue. I barbecue. Okay, my man. On my own dime. Yeah. I didn't ask anybody to bring any food. Don't do nothing. Just let me. I, you know, the the perfect the perfect cooking setting was barbecue grill, jazz, kids playing in the background, nice favorite beverage. Everything is good. My man. My man. And it didn't matter whether it was. Summer, winter, spring, or fall. How big is your organization now? Is it just you as a sole proprietor, or have you grown to the point where you have uh, employees? Uh, We have employees. My wife and I, we have employees. Um, I'd say total, it's about eight or nine of us. Eight or nine. Yeah. All food truck oriented, or is there a storefront in addition to the food truck? So here's the good thing about that. Um, When we first started, man, uh, we didn't even have a food truck. At all. Right. We just started with popping a, uh, a a tent and a table, going to different events. Um, and we we toyed around with the idea of doing a brick and mortar. But I didn't want to do that because I didn't want my hobby to become, um, you know, a some, job, a uh, job uh, right. something that I just didn't care to do ever again right. because I'm there too long. So we came up with the food truck. And in the very beginning, it's been five years now. In the first beginning, man, we rode around everywhere. If you called me, I was coming. Right. It didn't matter. I was just happy that you called me. Uh, But then we were making a ton of calls. Hey, can we come? Can we be a part? And we ran that food truck as much as we could. Um, And we went to different vending events, different uh, company settings and company outings. And we lost a lot of money in the process because we didn't know how to qualify events. I got you. And we can unpack that later on. But there, there's a method to the madness in being a mobile food truck. It's more than just pulling up somewhere, opening your window, and making money. It doesn't happen like that. Give us, give our listening audience who, you know, there are a lot of individuals sitting out there with a, with a passion like you had or a skill set, and they're thinking about how to go from A to B. Give us the biggest lesson learned that you've gotten through this whole process? Um, the biggest lesson learned in in this industry is get as much knowledge as you can about where you think you're wanting to go. Sure. That's that's the main thing. So I have this saying that I say to, to all of my workers and anyone else, if you ask the right person the right questions, you'll get the right answers. Absolutely. Mr. Hazel, if individuals want to support your business and locate you, give us your information where they can find you. Well, you can find us uh, online. 
Uh, our website is Bill's Grill Mobile BBQ. Dot com. You can find us at uh, Facebook and Instagram uh, at Bills Grill BBQ. Um, and you could email us at Bills Grill um, at gmail.com. And that's Bills with a Z, B I L L Z G R I L L at gmail.com. Right. And we're going to see in a couple of weeks with them ribs, right? Oh, man. Listen, uh-huh. I got to make it right. I got to <laughs> listen. Uh-huh. I got to make sure that I, I'm not going against your dad. You know, I can't go against her husband. But there is a, a, a truth to what we say that you don't need any sauce. I'm, I'm, okay. I appreciate you. I also want to uh, give our other guests an opportunity to get that information and to talk about real quickly the award. Uh, again, Morgan Lee Johnson and then also Tiffany Walden, co-founders of The Tribe Magazine. Where can individuals locate you? Well, tell us about the, uh, your, your award you got. Oh, yeah. Um, we received the um, inaugural um, Media and Storytelling Award from the Field, I mean, uh, Field Foundation. Um, it's a grant opportunity that will allow us to increase our capacity and um, increase our production of stories at thetribe.com. So we're really excited about that and thankful for the Field Foundation and uh, the MacArthur Foundation who invested in that um, fund. And if individuals want to cut the check to support you guys, <laughs> how do they do so? You can go to the tribe dot com, the tribe with two eyes dot com, um, and hit the donate button. You can donate once. You can set up a re- recurring uh, donation, however you'd like to do it. Um, we also accept, I guess, regular checks too. If you want to cut a check and email us, we'll come get it. Cut the check, <laughs> like however you want to do it. Just find a way. Just cut yeah, the check. Just let us know. We'll we'll show up. We'll be there. Absolutely. With a, with a smile. <laughs> and also want to say thanks again to our other guests. She's the CEO and president of the Chicago Minority Supplier. Development Council, Ms. Sheila Morgan. Ms. Morgan, where can individuals find you and your organization? We're located at 105 West uh, Adams, moving soon to 216 West uh, Jackson, I think it is, but uh, ChicagoMSDC.org. Easy, easy breezy. And fa- we're on Facebook, Twitter, everything. Same hook. All right, all okay. right. Thank you. We're going to keep the conversation going and make sure that, that I connect with these good people. I want to say, good, uh, say thank you again to my man, Troy Howard, always behind the scenes for doing this thing with TF Studios. My dynamic duo on the ones and twos, uh, Mighty Titus and Sonya Levine. I got to get out of here. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. I don't do this for my first name. I do this for my last name, Chance Jordan. Daddy loves you. And also, say what you want to about me. I did it my way. God bless. Bye-bye.